No spacecraft has gone farther than NASA's Voyager 1. Launched in 1977 to fly by Jupiter and Saturn, Voyager 1 crossed into interstellar space in August 2012 and continues to collect data. Voyager 1 and its sister ship Voyager 2 have been flying longer than any other spacecraft in history. Not only are the Voyager missions providing humanity with observations of truly uncharted territory, but they are also helping scientists understand the very nature of energy and radiation in space, key information for protecting future missions and astronauts. Voyager 1 carries a copy of the Golden Record, a message from humanity to the cosmos that includes greetings in 55 languages. Pictures of people and places on Earth and music ranging from Beethoven to Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good. NASA's Voyager 1 was launched after Voyager 2, but because of a faster route, it exited the asteroid belt earlier than its twin, having overtaken Voyager 2 on December 15, 1977. It began its Jovian imaging mission in April 1978 when it was about 165 million miles or 265 million kilometers from the planet. Images sent back by January 1979 indicated that Jupiter's atmosphere was more turbulent than during the pioneer flybys in 1973 to 1974. Beginning January 30, 1979, Voyager 1 took a picture every 96 seconds for a span of 100 hours to generate a color time-lapse movie to depict 10 rotations of Jupiter. On February 10, 1979, the spacecraft crossed into Jovian moon system and in early March, it discovered a thin ring circling Jupiter, less than 19 miles or 30 kilometers thick. Voyager 1's closest encounter with Jupiter was at 12.05 Universal Time in the day of March 5, 1979, at a range of about 174,000 miles or 280,000 kilometers. Following it encountered several of Jupiter's moons, including Amalthea at a 261,100 mile or 420,200 kilometer range. Io, 13,050 miles or 21,000 kilometers. Europa, 45,830 miles or 733,760 kilometers. Ganymede, 71,280 miles or 114,710 kilometers. And Callisto, 78,540 miles or 126,400 kilometers. In that order. Returning spectacular photos of their terrains and opening up completely new worlds for planetary scientists. Among the most interesting findings was on Io, where images showed a bizarre yellow, orange, and brown world with at least eight active volcanoes spewing material into space, making it one of the most, if not the most, geologically active planetary bodies in a solar system. The presence of active volcanoes suggested that the sulfur and oxygen in Jovian space may be a result of the volcanic plumes from Io, which are rich in sulfur dioxide. The spacecraft also discovered two new moons, Thebe and Mitis. Following the Jupiter encounter, Voyager 1 completed an initial course correction April 9, 1979, in preparation for its meeting with Saturn. A second correction on October 10, 1979 ensured that the spacecraft would not hit Saturn's moon Titan. Its flyby on the Saturn system in November 1979 was as spectacular as its previous encounter. Voyager 1 found five new moons, a ring system consisting of thousands of bands, wedge-shaped transient clouds of tiny particles in the B-ring that scientists called the spokes, a new ring or the G-ring and shepherding satellites on either side of the F-ring, satellites that keep the rings well-defined. During its flyby, the spacecraft photographed Saturn's moons Titan, Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, Dion, and Rhea. Based on incoming data, all the moons appear to be composed largely of water ice. Perhaps the most interesting target was Titan, 
which Voyager 1 passed at 5.41 Universal Time of November 12, 1979, at a range of about 2,500 miles or 4,000 kilometers. Images showed a thick atmosphere that completely hid the surface. This spacecraft found that the moon's atmosphere was composed of 90% nitrogen. Pressure and temperature at the surface was 1.6 atmospheres and minus 292 degrees Fahrenheit or equivalent to minus 180 degrees Celsius respectively. Atmospheric data suggested that Titan might be the first body in the solar system apart from Earth where liquid might exist on the surface. In addition, the presence of nitrogen, methane, and more complex hydrocarbons indicated that prebiotic chemical reactions might be possible on Titan. Voyager 1's closest approach to Saturn was at 2346 Universal Time of November 12, 1980, at about 78,290 miles or 126,000 kilometers. Following the encounter with Saturn, Voyager 1 headed on a trajectory to escape the solar system at a speed of about 3.5 astronomical units or 325 million miles or 523 million kilometers per year, 35 degrees out of the ecliptic plane to the north and in the general direction of the sun's motion relative to nearby stars. Because of the specific requirements for the Titan flyby, the spacecraft was not directed to Uranus and Neptune. On February 14, 1990, Voyager 1's cameras were pointed back and captured about 60 images of the sun and planets, the first portrait of our solar system as seen from the outside. The images were taken when the spacecraft was about 40 astronomical units from the sun, or 3.7 billion miles, or 6 billion kilometers. It's very faint and monotone because it is in a narrow frequency bandwidth, Stella Koch Ocker, a Cornell University doctoral student in astronomy, said in a statement. We're detecting the faint, persistent hum of interstellar gas. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft flew by Jupiter in 1979 and Saturn in 1980 before crossing the Heliopause in August 2012. The interstellar medium is like a quiet or gentle rain. James Cords, the George Feldstein Professor of Astronomy at Cornell and senior author of the study, said in a statement, In the case of a solar outburst, it's like detecting a lightning burst in a thunderstorm and then it's back to a gentle rain. Science data are returned to Earth in real time to the 34-meter deep space network antennas located in California, Australia, and Spain. Both spacecraft have enough electricity and altitude control propellant to continue operating until about 2020, when electrical power produced by the RTGs will no longer support science instrument operation. At that time, Voyager 1 will be almost 150 times farther than the Sun than the Earth, more than 20 billion kilometers almost 14 billion miles away. On February 17, Voyager 1 will be 10.4 billion kilometers or 6.5 billion miles from Earth and is departing the solar system at a speed of 17.4 kilometers per second or about 39,000 miles per hour. At the same time, Voyager 2 will be 8.1 billion kilometers or 5.1 billion miles from Earth and is departing the solar system at a speed of 15.9 kilometers per second or 35,000 miles per hour. Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, a division of California's Institute of Technology, manages the Voyager Interstellar Mission for NASA's Office of Space Science in Washington, D.C.